This method has a problem, and that problem is right here. Daytime offset that UTC now. And why is that a problem? Well, it is a problem because it does not allow us to create proper unit tests for the method. And that is because of the following. So take a look. So this is a very simple method that creates a game match, right? This game match object. But the key rule on this method is that you cannot create game matches unless it is a weekend, right? So that's the rule of the method. So if it is, if the daytime that you see now is not a Saturday or not a Sunday, right? Then we just go ahead and throw this invalid operation exception. And that's expected behavior. And otherwise we'll go ahead and actually return the game match. But the problem is that we cannot write a comprehensive and deterministic test suite for this method here uh, because it is not always going to be a Saturday, a Sunday, or any other day, right? And so if you take a look very quickly at the unit test I have already prepared, so let me show you this very quickly. I have a couple of unit tests here, right? So I have a unit test here that tries to verify uh, what happens on the, on the weekends. Uh, we should be able to create a match on the weekend. And the other method here is showing that we should be throwing an exception if it is a weekday. And so if we go ahead and try to run these methods, and let me show you my activity bar very briefly. So let's go ahead and into our testing pane over here. And I'm going to run these tests. What's going to happen is that sometimes the one of these test cases is going to pass, and some other times another test case is going to pass, right? So right now, as you can see, one of these case, test cases is, a, is failing, right? And this is the test case, and let me collapse this for a moment. This is the test case of the weekend, because right now it is a weekend, and I don't have a good way to tell this unit test uh, that um, I'm testing this Scenario where we are in a weekend, right? So right now it's a Friday, and so this unit test doesn't really know how to test for that, right? How to set the environment for that, right? Uh, well, in the other case, the case of the weekend is just passing very happily, right? But of course, if I try to run this test tomorrow or any other day that's not a weekday, uh, these test cases are going to change behavior. And so this not just complicates the unit test, it actually complicates me testing manually this application or this REST API. So let me show you this. If I go into my uh, matchmaker.http file over here, and I'm going to just run my, run my server right here. So I'm going to test the behavior of the API. And of course, right now it is a Friday. And if I try to go ahead and send a request to this endpoint, what's going to happen is that it is going to fail, right? So can't create matches on, on weekdays, uh, which is fine. Uh, but I would likely have a good way to verify the actual behavior of the method when it is a it is a weekend, right? To verify that everything works properly, even manually. And it is it's just too hard to do that right now. And so if you, if you have been writing code as for as long as myself, you may know the right way to fix this, right? And that, and that is by introducing some sort of abstraction that our uh, class can use to represent the time, right? So we can somehow influence that, that behavior in the class. And so fortunately, and let me close this and let me stop my server, fortunately, the folks in the .NET team, uh, as part of the preview four of .NET 8, have already introduced a brand new abstraction here. Let me show you. Uh, that abstraction is called the time provider, right? So the time abstraction, time provider. And so this class here, I mean, it, it's a fairly simple class and it's something that you usually create in your team to, to fix this situation. Uh, but now it comes built in, in directly into the .NET SDK. So you can use it right away. And let me show you how to use it. So let's go back over here and I'm going to go back into my class over here. So this class here is actually just a factory, right? So it's a very simple factory uh, whose purpose is to be able to create these game matches. So the first thing that we want to do here to fix this is to introduce a, an instance of that a time provider. So to do that, all we have to do is the following. So private read only time provider, time provider. All right, so that's a time provider and I'm going to just add a constructor here uh, to inject our instance of the time provider. So time provider, time provider, all right? And so we're going to say this dot time provider equals time provider, right? So now we have an instance of the time provider. And by having that, we can now take advantage of the methods of that class to figure out what is the current time. So for that, we're going to go down here. And instead of keep using daytime offset that UDC now, what we can do is actually do time provider dot get UDC now, right? And so uh, the cool thing about this is that now we are injecting what is actually an abstract class. So this time provider is an abstract class uh, that you can modify as you please in your unit test or even in a, in a kind of a dev environment scenario uh, where you want to somehow influence what's the current time. And so, and let me show you how to do that. So, so now this class depends on time provider. So now let's go back into our unit test over here right? Uh, where we have this test case fa uh, failing and the other one passing. But now we can do the following. So the first thing that we're going to do is to define what's going to be our current time. So I'm going to define a variable here that I'm going to call now equals new date time offset, 
right? And this should be uh, uh, the, the type of date that I want to verify here, okay? So since this is going to be for a weekend, what I want to do is just specify here a, a date that's actually going to be a weekend. And in my case, that's going to be 2023, uh, let's say this is May, uh, May 20, so May 20 is a weekend and the hours doesn't matter, so I'm going to use say 000, okay? So now we have the actual date uh, on which we want to run this specific unit test, right? So now what we can do is create our uh, mock time provider, right? And I'm using the mock library here. And so this is going to be a simulated time provider based on the abstract time provider, right? And now we have that, what we can do is the following. Okay, so now we can say, okay, so make sure that now, whenever somebody calls get UTC now, uh, it is going to return the date that I'm specifying right here, which is always going to be a Saturday. I'm actually going to put here a Saturday. All right, and so with that in place, what I can do now is instantiate my game match factory using that mocked object. So now I can say time provider that object. And so, and with that, I am able to run the unit test in the context of that very specific date that I want to test on, right? And just like I did this, I can go ahead and do this, this a similar thing for the other test case. So I'm going to go down here, okay? And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to prepare a date that in this case, I want it to be a weekday, right? So for that, I'm going to be using 2023, 5, and this is going to be 22, which is actually a... Monday, right? It's going to be a Monday. And uh, so in that case, and I'm going to also go ahead and do um, time provider dot object, right? And so to pass in that object over there. And this should uh, be good enough uh, to fix these two test cases. And uh, one more thing that I may want to test is uh, the actual creation date of that game match. So because if you see here, when we create a game match, uh, we are assigning the created time as now right, uh, which we could also not test before because we, we couldn't tell what's going to be the now uh, over here. But now we can actually test for that. So now we can say not just that the match should not be new in this case, but that the match dot created time should be now, right? It should be exactly now because that's the time that we have prepared for this unit test. And so now we have this in place, we can go ahead and just build this code. And then we're going to go ahead and run the test cases to make sure that these, these are passing now. So let me go ahead and run to my testing pane here. I'm going to run my test cases once again. And so if you just give it uh, one second, we're going to see that these test cases are, as expected, are now passing, right? So it's all good now. And that is because we are able, like I said, to influence uh, the timing for the, for the uh, factory that we're using here. So that's how you can handle that in unit test. Uh, but of course, I mean, you also want to handle this properly at the, the at runtime, so at the actual application execution. So how do you use this time provider in that case? So let me go now into my Explorer, and then let's go into Perron CS over here, right? And of course, this is where we uh, do all the initial startup initialization of all the objects and registrations and all that. Uh, but one thing that we're going to be missing here is that time provider instance, right? Because now we're injecting that here, right? And in order to do this kind of dependency injection of the time provider, we need to register an instance of a time provider in program.cs, which let me bring it over here. So what I'm going to do is just say the following. So I'm going to do build that services that add singleton, right? And what I'm going to add here is just a new, actually a time provider that system instance over here. System here represents the actual uh, time of the system. And so with that, we should be able to make sure that at runtime, we use the time of the system. Well, in the tests, we can simulate a, a very different time of time provider. Uh, so let's, let's run this and let's see what we get now. So I'm going to go ahead and run over here. And I'm going to collapse this for a moment. And let me go ahead and run my server here. All right. And so with the server running, there, I'm going to go ahead and click on send request. And as you see on the right side, I mean, we still have the same problem, right? Uh, we still have the same problem. I mean, the application at least loads, uh, but we can't create matches on weekdays. And that is expected, right? It's, not a, it's still not, not a weekend. So how we can actually verify the other case uh, manually if we wanted to. Uh, to do that, what we can do is to do the following. So let's go ahead and stop this for a second. And let's go back into our program.cs. And what I can do is to uh, do something depending on if I am in the development environment or if I am in the uh, production environment, right? So instead of doing this, what I'm going to do is the following. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to say the following. So I'm going to pass in here my service provider, right? And so I'm going to be a little bit more explicit on exactly what I want to do here, depending on the current environment, okay? And I think I'm missing something here and there. And so in this case, what I want to do is the following. 
First, I'm going to define here what is going to be a, a weekend, so, so a Saturday. And that Saturday I actually defined in my test. So I'm going to bring back my Saturday date over here, right? So it's going to be this, it's that, right there. And I'm actually going to name this one as a Saturday. So this is a Saturday. And then I'm going to say the following. So return builder dot environment dot is development. So if it is development environment, then in that case, I'm going to go ahead and return a new time provider. Uh, but it's not going to be just a generic time provider. This is going to be a time provider that is specifically prepared for development purposes, right? So if you go back here into my explorer, notice that in providers, I have created a brand new, what I call the dev time provider, right? So this is the one that we can use for development purposes. And all it's doing is just taking the, the daytime offset that you see now that has been provided and the constructor, and it's returning that one as the UTC now that is reflected right here. Right. So because of this, I can actually do whatever I want for development purposes uh, at boot time if it is a development environment. Right. So if I go back into program now, I can do new dev time provider. Right. And then this is going to be a, a Saturday. Now for this one, I do have to use a one more space here, which is going to be using matchmaker API that providers. Right, so that's a provider. So for development purposes, I'm going to be using that one, uh, and otherwise, I'm going to be using the other one. So I'm going to just be using time provider dot system. And so let's close column there, and then that should be good enough uh, for us. So if we're in development environment, we use our customized uh, time provider, development time provider. Otherwise, we just use the system one. So if I now go back and try to run my application, right? So dot net run. And then let's go back into our matchmaker HTTP. I'm going to go ahead and send a request. And this time, as you can see here, uh, we were able to actually create our game match. We do have our 200 OK right there. And then we have a game match where we are waiting for an opponent. So this worked just fine. And that is because uh, we are able to, you know, mock the time provider. And so there you go. Uh, the brand new time provider, a small addition, but a fantastic addition to the .NET SDK. So it's going to be included in .NET 8. And I think it's going to make our lives much, much easier. And so, yeah, hopefully you like this video. And if you liked it, please check out this other video where I covered another topic, another .NET topic that I think you're going to find interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.